Hey, what's going on there, folks? Earth Master here, checking in on this Tuesday evening, July 28th, 2020, about 9.20 p.m. West Coast time. And taking a look at the Earthquake 3D globe here, shows the latest, most recent earthquake out here. This is this 2.5 earthquake out here in, uh, yeah, it looks like about the uh, Texas, possibly New Mexico area. Yeah, definitely into Texas right there. Um, that 2.5 is it looks like they had a little bit of earthquake activity there prior to with the 2.6 uh, around Pecos Texas there we do see surprisingly quite a bit of earthquake activity uh, so this activity right here is not abnormal and comes to no surprise um, some aftershock activity up there in Alaska following that large one a couple days ago uh, there was another somewhat large one 6.1 magnitude quake there striking uh, late last night early this morning region or uh, time frame 6.1 is going to be that red flag right there we can bring down this magnitude a little bit so we can see, see a little bit better there so this is definitely an aftershock following the um, the quakes there the larger quake the 7.8 um, which is uh, it's up now on view right there let's drop that 6.1 if I can actually I can't so Anyway, definitely been some good size aftershock activity following that large 7.8 there uh, a few days ago now. And this is expected to continue, no doubt, um, as we're seeing today. Pretty good influx in aftershocks. A bunch of fours, a lot of twos in there. Um, take a look at a different map here. We can zoom in on the area of interest. For a little bit more detail over here along the uh, Lucian Islands area, close to the Lucian Islands area, in the subduction area along the uh, well, you got the Aleutian Trench right here. You can see the earthquake activity. This is 2.5 and above. There's the 6.0 magnitude quake, 6.1 I should say, at a depth of 41.3 kilometers, and in and around the areas where we're seeing all this aftershock activity. Uh, and it, it's kind of spread out a little bit so that's kind of a interesting scenario to watch here with these uh, aftershocks as they uh, migrate away from the main quake area bring back the last seven days 4.5 and above and we can see now well, here's the uh, here's the large one the 7.8 struck there back on the 22nd it looks like so a few days ago right almost a week ago and this here is roughly, I'm, I'm looking at all this activity here, and we're looking at probably about 40 to 50 mile rate uh, area that it span out. Maybe a little bit maybe a little bit more, 20, 40, 60. Could be close to uh, 70 miles or so spread out activity here in the uh, subduction zone off the Aleutian Islands area in Alaska. So you need to watch that region. This area is definitely capable of producing uh, much, much more um, fierce earthquake um, <laughs> 7.8 strong enough but uh, let me tell you it's definitely possible to see a larger earthquake but hopefully that does not happen in that region uh, taking a look at the USGS 2.5 over the last 24 hours not a whole lot of activity in California Idaho showing some activity See a couple two pointers there, 2.9 being the largest in that cluster of quakes there in that uh, area where we've seen quite a bit of activity over the past month or so, a couple months I would say, just north of the Sawtooth Fault System. So definitely uh, worth watching up there as well. Globally, take a look at that real quick here on this flat scale map. Some activity popping up here and they, uh, you can actually follow that activity in a horse horseshoe type shape up over India into the Himalayas and Afghan region into Iran as well no large quakes just a cluster of fours uh, being recorded throughout the area all throughout the region there but uh, other than that uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the Yellowstone maps here real quick I do like to cover that activity and there's a uh, there's got to be that 2.9 over here in this region near Holmes Hill. That's that 2.9 showing up there uh, in uh, Idaho. What, 
last night, I guess. It will, no doubt, show up on distant stations there. Uh, some activity. Let's see here. Let's bring this down a little bit. There is some activity, kind of some sporadic activity that showed up on a couple different stations here. You can see it over here to the west, west boundary in the Purple Mountain, also Mary Lake. Norris Junction is the seismograph to check out there for the clearest activity. And this here is not wind related, not weather related, but uh, definitely a lot of earthquakes taking place in a short amount of time uh, over the couple hours there um, in Yellowstone National Park within this region here. So uh, let's go ahead and bring back the uh, seismograph thumbnails there. And uh, like I said, if, if this was localized on just one station, I would be like, okay, something's going on. It's probably a generator, maybe some heavy equipment operators out there interfering with the uh, seismographs in the ground. But this is specifically not man-made. This is um, earthquake activity. Some type of swarming going on. You can also see it up here at Maple Creek. Um, pretty good swarm of activity. Very intense right this is a very intense earthquake swarm uh, but it's not long lasting here there's definitely uh, probably upwards of 50 to 100 earthquakes within this area now, i know the usgs does not have it up there yet uh let's go over here to the uh latest quakes here and then we'll we'll zoom in we'll check out the all magnitude quake here map and sometimes it takes them a while to update it eventually they do but uh as of right now Let's see here, zoom in here a little bit. Yeah, you can only see a 1.1 there in, in West Yellowstone. I guarantee you there's easily 50 to 100 earthquakes uh, being registered there on that that uh, little, you know, it's it's, a, it's like a little fit, you know, that a, that a kid will throw. But in this case, it's a Yellowstone super volcano throwing a little earthquake fit. And uh, there's definitely a, a pretty good uh, a pretty good handful of earthquakes there in that little spitter spatter. Uh, checking out the, let's see, where'd the trimmer map go? I did want to show that. I mentioned about this a little bit earlier on the live stream here. Still some activity up there in the uh, southern part of the Vancouver Island region. Very, um, very intense, I guess, if you will. This is a Cascadia Subduction Zone trimmer map. This is not earthquake activity, but rather trimmer being recorded way down in the subduction area of the Cascadia Subduction Zone, right? And there's definitely a good a good handful there along this region, which stretches, uh, well, the Cascadia Subduction Zone stretches well north of here and well south of here into Northern California there by quite a few hundred miles inland. But uh, this activity being recorded, picked up downstream of the subduction, and uh, it's very typical of activity that we're uh, used to in this region. So nothing to fear about, right? It is still 2020, so... <laughs> Oh, we'll see what happens. Anyway, folks, uh, please stay safe out there. It's uh, the world's getting crazy, and I keep saying it. it. Seems like every time I jump on here, do an update video, something more is happening. A little bit more craziness is happening out there in the world. So, the best you can do is just try to try to go along uh, with your life, and uh, you know, make the most of it. Make the most positive um, actions you can in your life and around people. And just, uh, you know, stay safe. Don't put yourself in any danger zones out there. Earthquake activity on the seismograph stations there. Looking pretty quiet at the moment. Not a whole lot of activity showing up. Uh, a little spitter spatter, small microquakes there on Mendocino Coast there in Northern California. But nothing, uh, nothing of interest, I would say. It's looking pretty dull. So have a good night, folks. Tuesday night. Please stay safe and we'll chat you guys another time. Thanks for tuning in. Peace out.